The biggest change of the GP market in April was the launch of the RTX 4070. Unfortunately, it came in at $600 and it has been sitting on the on the shelf. I waited to do my buying guide for this month about a week after the launch to see how it would affect the prices of other GPUs and would it actually stay available at its MSRP. Uh, I think a lot of people have found it a little disappointing at that price. That doesn't mean it's not the best deal in its price class though. We'll get to that in a minute. I did a recent video talking about the historical analysis of generation by generation. How has the price to performance of each generation uh, improved over its predecessor and the 4070 came in a little bit lacking there. Uh, but honestly at $600, that's not where we're gonna start this video because most people are buying in a, in a price class significantly below that. And with GPUs as expensive as they are, to help fund your purchase, you should sell your old GPU, and today's sponsor, Jawa.gg, can help you get the best price for your GPU. Uh, they offer a couple of options. The most convenient option is selling directly to Jawa, and I've told you how easy this process is before. Uh, now, you can list the card for sale yourself and manage your own listing and price, but again, a lot of you are just looking for a, something that's completely hassle-free and no need to wait on a buyer or, or deal with any of that. Uh, so it's, it's as simple as this. You just literally click get an offer. What's your GPU? GPU chipset, maybe I have an AMD GPU, I select my GPU model, maybe I have a 6600, uh, select the brand, um, maybe I've got the ASRock version, new, unopened, sealed in box. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna sell one of them. I fill in my email and, and confirm it's functional and all of that. It instantaneously pops up an offer. Now you might be like, uh, okay, now, now, now where are they getting that offer come from? They do inspect, test, clean, repaste, and repad your GPU and then create and manage the listing from there. So their offer price does take into account the cost to pay for this labor and hold the inventory. Again, this is your hassle-free option. Anyway, let's hop into the rest of this video and be like, okay, so where would you start? Well, well we did get the RTX 4070. We we still don't have a 4060, 4060 Ti, or 4050. So if you're buying at that low price point and you're looking for NVIDIA GPUs, uh, your current option is the RTX 3050. It comes in at about $260 and goes up from there. However, it has some very stiff competition uh, from both AMD and Intel. The RX 6600, uh, which I just simulated selling on uh, Java used, brand new only costs about $210 on the current market and offers significantly better performance than the RTX 3050. Maybe not in ray tracing, but I would argue that in this performance class, you should be turning down graphic settings to increase your performance. Uh, rather than increasing graphic settings with ray tracing and things like that. Maybe your opinion differs, um, but <laughs> the 6600 is offering a lot of raw performance um, by comparison here. Now, Intel's ARC A750 uh, is often offering us a good deal. Let's check out the uh, A750. Uh, looks like about $250 right now. So that one costs about the same as the 3050, offering a uh, solid performance. Again, AMD with the 6600 coming in a bit, bit cheaper. Also, if you want to spend the same amount of money uh, for the NVIDIA GPU, you could go up to the 6600 XT, which is now $255. Uh, so if we're looking at that $250 price point, which I think where a lot of realistic consumers want to spend, uh, it's really the 6600 XT versus the 3050 and the ARC A750. I recently did a detailed head-to-head -head comparison video on these GPUs, and I found the 6600 XT to be the most compelling to me. Um, Intel's Arc does offer better price to performance than Nvidia, but I believe its software stack and drivers and general user experience still has room for improvement. And I'm glad they have been improving and it has gotten significantly better from launch. But I think the average day-to-day -day user uh, will have fewer troubles going with one of the um, brands that have more had more years and literally decades to work on their drivers and all of that. Um, so, and between the 6600 XT from AMD and the RTX 3050 from Nvidia, I think it's just a hands down win for the 6600 XT. Now, some people need an Nvidia GPU for certain productivity apps and work applications. So just in general, some people will be willing to spend more money on an Nvidia GPU uh, for um, you know productivity apps, their workflow, things like that. Uh, so do keep that in mind. But this video is focusing on gaming GPU performance um, anyway, let's go ahead and move up to the next price class. So if we use the NVIDIA GPUs as they're the market leaders as our price class uh, determining factor, 
Let's see where the RTX 3060 is at. It has been overpriced for a long time, but has been very slowly coming down. It looks like you can currently buy one as low as $325, although keep in mind that that's relying on a mail-in rebate to hit that. Those can take months to process if they work out properly at all. And that is a single fan uh, uh, version, although it is at least a 12 gigabyte version. Beware, there are some eight gigabyte RTX 3060s that in addition to just having less VRAM, uh, and not always being cheaper than a 12 gigabyte version, they also have cut down the memory bandwidth, uh, which actually makes them perform slower in many games, sometimes significantly so. Uh, so if we're using the uh, the NVIDIA GPUs, um, maybe we'll go with the two fan version, $340-ish, what could you get from the competition? Uh, well, from AMD, you could grab the 6700 XT for $350, so very similar price point, also has 12 gigabytes of VRAM, and the 6700 XT is significantly faster than the RTX 3060. Uh, the advantages for the RTX 3060 would be that, you know, uh, DLSS upscaling does still look a little bit better than FSR2 upscaling, and that is something to keep in mind. Um, but, you know, you're mainly using DLSS to gain performance, and the 6700 XT is just faster without needing to upscale. So definitely kind of mitigates that value proposition. There's also the increased ray tracing performance. The 3060 is at a point where maybe if you're using it 1080p, ray tracing could be something that you could consider, especially if you're combining with upscaling. So there is that, although the 6700 XT comes from such a uh, advantage in its baseline non-ray traced performance that you have to be enabling a pretty significant ray tracing workload for the 3060 to gain a meaningful advantage. Um, at which case, again, your overall performance is tanking pretty far without upscaling, but then you can upscale. So there's a lot going on here. Um, and again, there are the productivity apps and things like that to consider. Personally, my recommendation here would definitely be for the 6700 XT for its significantly better raw performance than the 3060 at the same price point. Now, the RTX uh, 3070 is the next step up from Nvidia. While it has been supplanted by the 4070, it was the 4070 came in at a higher price point. So actually the 3070 in the new market is still sitting at the same $530-ish that it has been before the 4070 launched. And that speaks to how disappointing the 4070 launch is. It'd be nice if a new GPU uh, in this class came out and completely disrupted the price to performance, forcing the rest of the market to drop its prices relatively to it. However, that just didn't happen. Um, also, I realized I just skipped the 3060 Ti. So let's go back to the 3060 Ti for a second. That comes in at about $410. Um, and, uh, you know, price to performance wise offers actually a better deal than the 3070, um, but not as good of just raw performance as the 3070. Uh, it has eight gigabytes of VRAM instead of uh, the 12 that you can get on a 6700 XT, which costs less, although the raw performance of the two GPUs is similar. And the, uh, we have seen a lot more games lately coming out where eight gigabytes of VRAM does mean you have to turn down settings to avoid spilling over your VRAM capacity. I haven't retested my 3060, uh, 3060 Ti uh, too much recently um, in some of the absolute latest games like Resident Evil 4, um, uh, which, which at max settings can use a lot of VRAM and cause issues, um, Last of Us Part 1, things like that. Um, uh, but, but anyway, we have been seeing 8 gigabytes of VRAM and I've tested a lot of other GPUs uh, causing some issues. So I certainly like the 6700 XT having the 12 gigabytes of VRAM. Uh, raw performance is very similar. I could honestly recommend either of these GPUs if you're really interested in ray tracing and think you'll use DLSS a lot especially, then maybe the 3060 Ti makes sense with the main caveat being the eight gigabytes of VRAM, uh, in which case a lot of people might prefer to go with the 6700 XT to be less likely to need to turn down settings um, in, in games that are already out now, let alone ones that continue coming out in the near future. Now we can actually uh, also mention that, um, so the next step up, like I said, from NVIDIA is the RTX 3070. And then we have the, um, the price competitors on that. The most direct price competitor is the 6800 XT from AMD. Uh, coming in at $535, offering once again, significantly better raw performance. 
at a um, at, at the same price point. Now again, uh, the the Nvidia GPU does have a better upscaler, but at this point you'd be needing to upscale just to catch up to the performance of the 6800 XT. Um, and again, eight gigabytes of VRAM versus 16 gigabytes of VRAM. Um, I really feel like for literally double the VRAM, uh, with eight gigabytes actually being a problem in some current games. <laughs> at the same price and significantly higher raw performance, unless I needed NVIDIA for work, some kind of AI workload, which honestly a lot of those don't work that well on 8 gigabytes of VRAM anyway. Um, <laughs> you know, I definitely take the 6800 XT here myself. You could also consider the 6800, which is currently priced at $470. The, the 6800 still has double the VRAM of the RTX 3070. Um, but comes in with um, better, uh, like, like I said, better raw performance, at least by a bit, and a lower price, so certainly better um, price to performance. Again, the NVIDIA advantage uh, in heavier ray tracing workloads and upscaling. Now, with that being said, you guys might be feel like this guy's just in, I, I sometimes I get confused, uh, sorry, accused in these videos of just being complete AMD shill. I would never, uh, you know, never recommending the NVIDIA GPU, all of that. And I do try to be balanced and explain the, uh, the current market, but uh, honestly, at the, up until the, the higher price points, AMD just seems to be offering a significantly better deal. Um, well, what, it, what happens when we move up to the next price class? Well, I mean, technically you've got the 3070 Ti, but it's so close in price to the 4070, which has more VRAM and raw performance, that the 3070 is just silly. It also costs more than a 6800 XT, which is still faster and um, has more VRAM. So <laughs> um, anyway, I think if you're gonna go up to that price point, the 4070 from, from Nvidia is one that you could consider. And despite everything I've said about how disappointing it is as a generational uplift, it is some generational uplift, as well as new features like AV1 encoding and um, frame generation, which could be of interest to single player gamers. Um, it's not of use to uh, competitive gamers because of its small increase to input latency, which you don't want in a competitive game, but it can help uh, smooth out the motion fluidity of a single player game, as long as you get to high enough base frame rate uh, for the uh, Im image artifacts to be lessened and the um, the overall lit input latency to still feel pretty playable. I think if you can get near a 60 FPS frame rate without using frame generation and then enable frame generation, it can help take advantage of a uh, high refresh rate monitor, um, but while still keeping graphic settings overall pretty high. So it's a good feature. Um, Anyway, it comes in at $600. So the main competitors here would be the 6800 XT, which comes in at uh, significantly less money and offers basically the same raw performance, although the 4070 would have better ray tracing performance, lower energy consumption, and uh, a better upscaler with DLSS uh, 2, and then also the frame generation technology AMD has announced they're working on a competitor to that, but as of now, it doesn't actually exist. So um, I don't wanna, you know, credit AMD for a feature that we don't know when or if or how good it will be when it uh, does or, you know, hopefully come out someday. Anyway, the more direct price competitor is the um, 6950 XT. I did a detailed head-to-head -head comparison of these two GPUs. And in that video, I let people argue it out in the comment section after <laughs> um, uh, giving the case for either of them. Here's the quick summary of the case for either of these GPUs. The 6950 XT comes in at roughly the same price, although currently a little bit more expensive than the 4070, and does offer noticeable but not dramatically faster performance. It also has 16 gigabytes of VRAM instead of 12. Those are its main advantages. The RTX 4070 is coming in slightly cheaper, only has 12 gigabytes of VRAM, um, and again, offers a little bit lower overall performance. However, if you're enabling a light ray tracing workload, their performance pretty much evens out. And in heavier workloads, the 4070 can have a significant advantage. And then once you start enabling things like frame generation, um, that's an even larger advantage. And then the 4070 is doing this for over 100 watts less of energy consumption, which will not only add up to your electricity bill over time, but also it means that the 4070 can be run cooler and quieter. It's in a smaller uh, form factor, so it's easier to fit in cases and doesn't require as big of a power supply. I'm gonna go ahead and let you choose which of these matters to you more. Do you want the increased VRAM and a bit faster raw performance? 
Or do you want lower energy consumption, slightly lower price, lower VRAM capacity, although still 12 gigabytes is at least a lot more than we had in the previous generation of NVIDIA G GPU with eight. 12 is certainly less concerning today, although will be concerning sooner than 16 gigabytes. Um, Again, increased features and um, uh, all of the general NVIDIA support and productivity apps and things like that. If one of those two arguments stands out to you, buy the one that stands out to you, okay? So there are there's an argument to be made for both of these. And I don't think you're necessarily right or wrong to choose one side or the other of that. Now, um, if we hop up to the next uh, price point, we've got the 4070 Ti from NVIDIA. The 4070 Ti is noticeably faster than the 4070, although it is, you know, significantly more expensive. It is $200 uh, increase, still only has the 12 gigabytes of VRAM. Uh, so there's that. Uh, and then compared to the 4070, it has the same feature set with frame generation and all of that. So it's a 4070 can be a bit of a hard sell just as an increase over the 4070. And then um, a, the, here's where we finally get into AMD's next generation uh, offerings with the 7900 XT. And for some reason, an RTX 2060 is popping up on PC Part Picker, but we've got the $800 7900 XT. So at the same price, the same price, you're getting 20 gigabytes of VRAM. So from a VRAM capacity, it certainly has the potential to have better longevity. And again, it does offer a uh, somewhat faster um, raw performance compared to the 4070 Ti, although not just an absolutely mind-blowingly faster difference. And once you, once again, once you enable ray tracing, uh, the 4070 Ti is fast as fast in light ray tracing workloads or significantly faster in heavy ray tracing workloads. So in other words, this seems like we're getting a little bit repetitive here. AMD is offering a little bit better, uh, you know, price to performance for raw performance and better VRAM, uh, VRAM than its competitor to maybe help with some longevity. But Nvidia is offering better power efficiency um, uh, and features like frame generation and, and a better uh, DLSS upscaler versus FSR upscaler. This is another one where I'm not gonna make a hard call on which of these you should buy. I think it's just a split recommendation at the $800 price point. If one of those arguments sounds better to you, um, then that's the one that you should buy. Now at this point, um, we're moving into the, uh, the $1,000 price point. And at the $1,000 price point, there isn't a competition. The 7900 XDX uh, does not have a direct NVIDIA competitor. It costs $1,000, has 24 gigabytes of VRAM, um, and then you could move up to the RTX 4080, which has 16 gigabytes of VRAM, but comes in at, it looks like it's a little below MSRP now. Its MSRP is 1,200, but coming in at uh, 1,150. So it's coming in at $150 uh, uh, price uh, increase over the 7900 XTX. To me, $150 price difference does not put these in as direct competition as some people would think. So if $1,000 is the price point you're buying at, the 7900 XDX is the best $1,000 GPU. If you want to spend closer to $1,200, currently 1150, the RTX 4080 is the best $1,150 GPU. Is it better than the 7900 XDX? In my opinion, yes. I think with 16 gigabytes of VRAM versus 24, once again, AMD's offering more, but 16 gigabytes of VRAM is not super concerning, at least for now. Um, it's a lot. And then again, this, this GPU is strong enough that I think in many cases using ray tracing and possibly along with DLSS and frame generation is very realistic. And the 7900 XDX can be a little bit faster without ray tracing, but not a lot. So I think personally, if you offered me the 4080 and the 7900 XDX at the same price, I would buy the 4080. Um, but they are not offered at the same price. So if to you saving the $150 and losing out on some of those features, but gaining some VRAM, 
um, makes more sense to you, then go with that. So like I said, at the $1,150 price point, I give the 4080 my recommendation, and then the 4090 stands absolutely alone at $1,600 is by far the fastest GPU on the market. It can definitely make sense if it's in your budget and you're going for high refresh rate 4K gaming. There really isn't anything else um, that does what it does at the 4K resolution. Um, hopefully that you found uh, this video useful for you. Huge thank you to my channel members and subscribers, and I hope all of you have an excellent day.